the Radnor Township Board of Health to order, and if you can all join me and rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, our announcements are the uh, Larry House uh, not will join us this evening, so uh, we will not be uh, having the uh, health officer's report, but I'm pleased to note that uh, Dr. Ian Ballard is uh, now uh, joining or rejoining uh, the Board of Health. And, uh, Doctor, if you don't mind, take a few minutes to uh, tell us your background, and uh, we can welcome you to the board. Um, I'm, a, I guess, a semi-retired uh, internal medicine physician, uh, worked uh, many years for Wyeth, but also maintained a limited practice and have been adjunct faculty at Jefferson and teaching in the uh, primary care residency at Bryn Mawr Hospital and the medical director of a home health agency and uh, Nurse Ratchet and I do FAA exams in our home. Uh, and uh, aside from that, we uh, chase after 17 grandchildren. Thank you. Well, thank you for uh, agreeing to uh, rejoin the uh, uh, Board of Health and uh, look forward to your uh, uh, contributions. Um, let's uh, move to the minutes. Um, I uh, was able to, not able to get a copy before the meeting, but I uh, placed a copy at uh, everyone's uh, position. So if everyone could take a few moments to review the minutes and uh, provide any additions, corrections, uh, and then we can move to approve them. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Hearing no nays, the minutes are approved as submitted. Uh, since Larry is not here, uh, John, I assume there'll be no health officer's report unless you have anything you want to impart to us. Now, I, if you, I, I imagine you could uh, read the report if you would like to, but we could also wait until um, the next meeting and have Larry give us two reports, consecutive reports. Um, that's fine with me. I don't know if anyone has a contrary view. All right, so we will uh, delay that until the next meeting. Um, now moving to uh, old business, EAC update. Um, beyond what we've been, you know, I've been sending you uh, the members of this board via email, keeping everyone as up to date as possible on EAC. I have no additional information. Um, EAC uh, will not be having a November meeting, uh, and we'll have a combined November and December meeting in early December. I believe the date is December 1st. Uh, thank you uh, for those comments. Any questions for Herb? All right, hearing none, uh, I'll move to the uh, medical environment and healthcare access. Um, as I am sure everyone is aware, uh, the great debate going on now in Washington, D.C., regarding healthcare reform matters. Uh, the House of Representatives has passed their Affordable Health Care for America Act, uh, which the CBO estimates that will provide coverage for 96% uh, of Americans, up from the approximately 87% covered now. Um, uh, under the summary provided at the uh, uh, Department of, uh, uh, or the Committee of Labor's uh, website, it talked about the, that it was under the 900 billion threshold. I would note that that does not include Include the fact that they're going to deal with the physician payment issue, the so-called sustainable growth rate issue, which is about $250 billion fix, so it's not included in their estimates. So the numbers are actually uh, north of a, a trillion, uh, potentially up to a trillion two uh, dollars. Uh, there's a number of immediate reforms that they talk about, uh, uh, as well as the development of a health insurance exchange uh, to uh, provide the folks with an opportunity to uh, get insurance. There's obviously a number of limitations and controls related to that. Uh, the House version does contain the uh, public health insurance option or, or governmental run program, whatever your uh, uh, preference would be there for the description. Uh, in any event, it, it will contain a health insurance plan. Um, the, the biggest debate for providers, or, uh, well, one of the biggest debates for providers over the public uh, option was whether that option would pay at a Medicare rate, which uh, uh, for most, insure, or most providers would be an unsustainable. Uh, situation. Uh, right now, uh, that uh, it, the, the public option is supposed to be able to negotiate uh, rates. They are not premised upon uh, Medicare rates, but that doesn't mean it could not revert to that uh, in the future. So a lot of un unanswered questions uh, 
uh, a lot of issues related to that, uh, and the matter uh, will continue to be debated with the balance of the year. Uh, the Senate has put out uh, the Senate finance version, uh, and uh, Senator Harry Reid, the majority leader, is now trying to meld the different versions in the Senate to come up with the Senate version, uh, and then uh, the uh, working committee between the House and the Senate to see and come up with a final bill. Um, I'm sure everyone has been following this in the, in the news, so if I can answer any questions, I'd be more than happy to. Good. <laughs> uh, Radner, Health Matters, sir. Okay. Um, we've um, picked the first program, which was on influenza, both uh, seasonal and uh, um, novel H1N1. And um, we, we've heard uh, some feedback, um, all of it positive. Uh, and uh, so that's, that's been aired fairly extensively over the past couple of weeks. Um, and future programs are in the early planning stages. Uh, they most likely will include an uh, upcoming one on, uh, on head injuries, particularly to young people uh, as a result of uh, sports related activities. And there's been a lot of information um, coming out lately. And I think that would be a, a very one of great interest to a lot of people. Um, I'd also like to announce, uh, according to the uh, mainline Suburban Life newspaper of last week, uh, November 11th, uh, Radar Studio 21, uh, which is a local cable channel, um, will be airing three panels um, starting at 8 p.m. Wednesday, November 18th, um, on um, pandemic influenza. Uh, this is a program that is, uh, the panels are actually being convened by the Council on Foreign Relations. And the first panel uh, will be aired at 8 p.m. Um, that is a scientific look at pandemic influenza. And the second panel starts right after the first one at 9:10, um, which will examine the economic aspect of pandemic influenza. And then right after that, starting at 10:20, the final panel discusses foreign pa policy matters related to um, uh, pandemic influenza. The entire uh, three-panel session will be repeated on. Um, Channel 21 starting at 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. on Thursday, November 19th, and again on Saturday, November 21st at 8 p.m. Uh, so I would urge uh, everyone to, uh, if they can, to uh, view those programs. They should be very interesting and provide uh, additional information. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, any questions for her? Okay. Uh, we'll move to uh, new business. Um, any uh, items under new business? I know Amy had talked about the, the, the flu clinics uh, at the last meeting and uh, anything new on that? The uh, schools are ready to go. They're just waiting for vaccine from the state. So not clear when, if that's going to come. And meanwhile, more and more kids have gotten sick anyway. That's <laughs> what's expected. So. And is that the, the mist or the? Depends what the state would send. Oh, okay. The place they're getting all different things. Oh, interesting. Thank you. Um, I also had the opportunity to uh, attend on November 10th the uh, League of Women Voters presentation on um, the Delaware, S Delaware County, uh, the fact that Delaware County did not have um, a distinct Department of Health uh, uh, contra to Montgomery County. Uh, very interesting presentation. Uh, a lot of uh, very uh, good information was provided uh, about the benefits of a uh, separate and distinct Department of Health. Uh, there was also uh, discussion regarding uh, finances and the fact that although there would be an expense, uh, there would also be funding available to the federal government uh, programs and whatnot that, uh, although may not uh, offset the entire cost of the department, uh, would offset a, a substantial amount of those costs. Additionally, uh, there was discussion about uh, if you had a county department of health, would that enable uh, various townships who have their own uh, services to either redirect those to more needed services or reduce costs, thereby having overall cost of it uh, uh, reduced. So very interesting presentation. Uh, there's going to be more follow-up for that. Currently, uh, the county uh, commissioners are uh, have commissioned a study, uh, which is anticipated to be completed in the near future, uh, which will uh, print uh, findings about how a department, what the cost of the department would be, what the role would be, and how difficult it would be or easy it would be to implement. So um, I think there is a, a future for this, and uh, we'll just have to stay tuned to see uh, how it goes. What, Mark, what, what is the, the process once the county commissioners are finished with their deliberations? Is this something that becomes a ballot issue in, in the county, or? 
Uh, that is a great question. My understanding from the presentation is essentially that it would be the commissioners creating another department. I don't, I don't believe there's a, a referendum that would have to be passed to create a department uh, at the county level. Um, if it was a new tax associated with it, that might require a, a ballot action. But uh, creating the new department, I don't believe so. There was the, that gets tied in apparently to the state health plan, uh, which gets submitted every year to the government because you do have to apply for these uh, funds. I guess there would be some interrelationship with the, with the state. Currently, um, according to the presentation, Delaware County is serviced by the State Department of Health, and, uh, but they're, I guess, located uh, in Chester, one off in Chester, and then there's one up in Norristown. So um, uh, query, is that a sufficient resource for a county the size and diversity of Delaware County? So very interesting uh, presentation. A great question. Yeah, um, the office in Norristown is part of the Montgomery. I mean, that's where the Montgomery County Department of Health is. is right, Norristown. correct, yeah. exactly right. What, were, what did you come away thinking would be some of the main benefits, and and if there were drawbacks, what you know, aside from the cost, um, what what did you come away thinking? Well, you know, it was interesting. Uh, you go into something like that, and and you don't know what you don't know, and uh, it was very interesting reviewing. Uh, the role of the Montgomery County Department of Health and, and how it plays with the health care providers in the county, how it relates to um, HAPMAT issues, uh, bringing those resources there. Um, they, there was a distinction drawn between an event that occurred in Chester, the city of Chester, a HAZMAT issue, and then a HAZMAT issue that occurred up in Montgomery County. And apparently the Montgomery County Department of Health was on the scene within minutes, you know, as soon as the fire department was there, whereas the Delaware County had to rely on state to, to arrive, and that was until some time later. So uh, major buckets of area related to um, hazmat issues, um, coordinating uh, with regard to influenza and, and flu clinics. Uh, it, uh, apparently there's a lot of funding that comes into Montgomery County because all of that is run through uh, the county uh, department of health. So there's a preventative care aspect to it, and then uh, there's normal run of the mill health issues regarding uh, food establishments, et cetera. So um, where I viewed the real opportunities were, were on the uh, hazmat side, the disaster side, if you will, as well as the preventative health and, and being able to coordinate care among providers in the community in the event of a, a disaster. Right now we rely on Delaware County, that is, relies on the state along with the uh, hospital association protocols, and we've had a presentation in the past by, about that. Um, on the local side, um, you know, it depends on how big you want to make something and kind of viewed the review of the, the, uh, the, the food establishments and things like that as probably better done at the township level, personal view, based on the presentation. Um, Philadelphia, I guess, does it as a Philadelphia level. Uh, the other point had been made, the, one of the, the advantage of at least the county doing it is Philadelphia runs a website where you can look up any food establishment on the Philadelphia Department of Health website. Um, in Lower County, you have to rely on the, the state's website, which apparently is not uh, updated as frequently as uh, as more local control. So, very interesting uh, presentation. I think uh, uh, all things being equal, and depending upon the cost, and these are very difficult times to increase the cost of state government or, or county government. Um, you know, uh, obviously, some value there. Okay. Um, any other items? Actually, I'm glad you are here. Uh, I did want to, uh, I, I assume everyone saw the article today in the Inquirer about the uh, uh, the deer culling of the herd, I guess, that's going on in the Valley Forge and elsewhere. With regards to the uh, deer issue, I started to review numbers for our township with the deer strikes. Uh, that seems to be a little bit lower, but we're not at the end of the year yet, and I don't know if it'll be statistically significant. But the, uh, and I still have to map out where they are. So the numbers are down, but we focused on uh, five areas for signage last year, and we'll see if those particular five areas, uh, you know, if it made any difference. Um, yeah, as far as the, the culling goes and whatnot, um, it's, it's an interesting topic, which we discussed a little bit at the beginning of looking at the deer. And unless it's a sustained effort, usually one-time cullings re make the population rebound 
to higher numbers than before. And uh, it unfortunately has to be a sustained effort, but certainly uh, I'll, I'll leave that to them. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I do remember that from your presentation, because every time I read that now, uh, you know, I think about your comments that, you know, you may reduce the population, but uh, almost uh, instantaneously it's going to be back even higher. I find that fascinating. Yeah. But uh, we look forward to the follow-up on your report. Uh, a lot of good work was done there. Uh, for our benefit of our new members, uh, Dr. Donato took the initiative and uh, developed a report on uh, the number of deer strikes, deer hitting cars in, in the township and identified actually particular areas of risk and uh, the commissioners uh, saw fit to put up some additional signage. So it's, uh, we're all anxious to see or hear what the, the final results are on the, on the end, the impact of the, of the signage. So thank you very much. Uh, that being said, uh, any other items for presentation? If not, uh, I think we have a new record uh, for our meeting. Uh, see, John, you're going to have to tell Larry. He's the one that delays the meeting. So. <laughs> All right. In any event, uh, the meeting stands adjourned. Thank you very much.